and uh, who's heard nine speakers of parliament. However, among them, Jacob Olanya Lokori, who is the ninth speaker, is the first to have died while in office or sitting speaker. An incident that has set precedent since the 1995 constitution never catered for what happens when a sitting speaker dies in office. Whereas this precedent can be looked at as an institutional memory, Professor Ndebese Mwambusha from Makere University School of History holds a different perspective about the notion of institutional memory left. We don't have a lot of memory because we have never lost, I think, a, a sitting uh, speaker of parliament. And that's why even the constitution did not properly cater for what would happen in the event that the speaker dies in office. The memory we can always talk about is that the position of a speaker has been controversial in terms of elections, of electing the speaker. So we are likely also to experience some controversy over the election of a new speaker. A section of Ugandans have been advancing arguments that since the constitution is silent on what happens when a sitting speaker dies in office, then the deputy speaker should directly succeed the late speaker Jacob Olanya without subjecting the house to a new election of the speaker. But Professor Andevesa says Uganda's parliamentary history has not had deputies repressing speakers upon death. Actually, even under NRM, we have had the, the speaker, the first speaker of NRM, many people may not know, was President Museven. And he was not necessarily succeeded by his deputy who was Honorable Chigongo. So, I don't think that the memory you are talking about is a long memory. However, if we want to use the short memory, then maybe uh, he, uh, uh, the, the, the late Olanya, may be succeeded by Anita, but that is a short memory. Despite of the controversies, what does the position of the Speaker of Parliament entail? Uh, that position needs somebody who has got emotional intelligence, who has got relational intelligence, who has got cognitive intelligence. It needs a good balance of emotional, relational and cognitive intelligence. The one who looks at the next generation, not the one who looks at the next elections. That is, would be the ideal speaker that we would have in this country for the betterment of the country, for good, for democracy and nation building and state building. But why is rational intelligence so necessary for one eyeing the speakership docket? He should be a uniting factor. He should be somebody who has got emotional intelligence and can easily tell that the statement he or she is going to make is likely to cause commotion. It was likely to anger people since he's supposed to bring all the people together. So it, the speaker, the competent speaker should be the one who is consensual, not conflictual. So the competence should be a consensus builder, not a conflictual person. That is the ideal person. However, that may not be the speaker we are likely to get. The doctrine of separation of powers has been the biggest problem among the three arms of government, often sparking off code running battles between the executive and the legislature. But how central is the position of the speaker of parliament in the management of state affairs? The competent speaker should be the one who is consensual, not conflictual. So the competence should be a consensus builder, not a conflictual person. That is the ideal person. However, that may not be the speaker we are likely to get. Why do I say that we may get a speaker that may not be the ideal speaker who is a consensus builder? It is because the speakership is determined not by the competence of the person, but the political balance, the political logic in the country. I think 
the speaker we are likely to get is that one who will bring political support of a certain region to the NRM. The 11th parliament will, on Friday this week, walk to the polls to determine the next speaker of the house after the position of the speaker of parliament fell vacant on the 20th of March 2022, when the speaker Jacob Olanya was announced dead by President Museveni.